Mario Ginobili can make a shot from anywhere on the court. Is it magic or is it magnets? Tiny magnets placed on the ball, ensuring a strong attraction to the metal rim. Watch. And when Manu needs more magnets, Manu gets more magnets. Don't believe me? Watch the finals and you'll see there's really no other explanation. Fortunately, I caught on to you after the Eagles Super Bowl. So I was able to <laughs> kind of have fun with that a little bit. Anyway, I was a big football fan for a long time. But uh, anyway, just wanted to share that with you. Appreciate it, man. Let take you care. care. Uh, all right, you take care. Caller? Hey, how you doing? This is Joseph. What's up, Joseph? Yeah, you got me? I hear you. Loud and clear. You're good. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I happen to be like, uh, you, you mentioned how people are skeptics, but I happen to be one of those skeptics who actually investigate things before believing in them. So one of my contentions I have with you is when you speak about uh, how the NBA is rigged, i.e. sports. Right. And my problem is, is I've always been curious to wonder how is it rigged when you, you know, you obviously see players playing defense. You do? You have to make the You do? Back. Hold on, man. You do? I'm just How old are you, 10? You 10 years old? Wait a minute. That's a, well, let's just, no, no, no. Seriously, how old, how old are you to just make that? That statement's embarrassing no, to me. They, all right, hold on. I, I got to mute you real quick. I'm going to put you back on, but I'm going to mute you real quick because I need to talk. To say that they play um, defense in the NBA, to me, that's an embarrassing statement. No, they don't, okay? No, they don't. The NBA, like, for anyone, a grown man to think that the NBA is not rigged, that should just be embarrassing right there. See, that's exactly who I would think are my skeptics. People that can't even see the rigging of the NBA, which is worse than the WWE. They play defense in the NBA? Uh, let me just take you back to the 2000 Western Conference Finals, Blazers, Versus the Lakers. Blazers are up 20 points going into the fourth quarter. And how, go, go back. I'm sure you can find that that game at this day. Watch the fourth quarter and tell me tell me anything logically was done by the Blazers in the fourth quarter. And, and this isn't the only example. I just all, all, this was like the last time I ever like watched a basketball game, even maybe thinking there was a chance of legitimacy. Long before this, I saw what a joke the NBA was. You couldn't even breathe on Michael Jordan, but. One of the worst displays of sports is the fourth quarter of the Blazers and Lakers game. The Blazers play zero defense. They don't try to rebound at all. They don't use the shot clock with a 20-point lead. Instead, they just rush down the court and fire up bricks. It's like, uh, this is like everything that you would never do if you were trying to win the game. Okay? Sports are the biggest joke there is. And for a grown man to call in and be like, how can sports be rigged? I mean, how couldn't they be? Did you watch the Super Bowl the other year when I told everybody the Patriots would win and it would be all about 25? I wish my channel hadn't been deleted because that video had nearly a million views and about 50,000 comments by haters because the Patriots were down by 25 points. How did the Patriots come back? With a completely rigged and embarrassing script. I mean, the, the Falcons had first and 10 with about four minutes left in the game at the Patriots' 22-yard line. All they had to do was run the ball a few more times and kick a field goal and go up 11 you know, they would have been up 11, like around the two-minute warning. What did they do instead? Drop back to pass. They end up in a third and 33 situation using about five seconds a clock. <laughs> and then they lose the game. I mean, just look at the way the Patriots have won all their Super Bowls. Every single one of them's a joke. So from, from the NBA, and again, in the NBA, they use technology to ensure outcomes. And, and seriously, am I getting this question right after I exposed Kobe Bryant in the 157 ritual the day of how Kobe Bryant equals 157. He died on his 157th day of his age. Then they have an all-star game in tribute to him. And they set the target score at what? 157? And you're seriously calling in to tell me you're a skeptic because of the NBA? Dude, you must not have been here when I told everybody how to make 40 times their money to bet on the Cavs to come back when they were down 3-1 and went on the real King James's birthday. Or any of the other years before the season even began and I told them what the NBA Finals would be. So, okay, I'll put you back on. Your turn. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, what I was saying is I, I included defense and I was going to say that in order for the players to make the basketball in the basket, they have to have, they have, to have skills and talent. No, but not when there's technology. Play. Not when there's technology to ensure outcomes. How could you, let me explain something to you, how could they precisely make sure that they have set points 
Technology. Technology. To make sure the ball goes through the hoop or doesn't go in the hoop. Do you remember the Duke basketball game last year and how that one ball came off the rim that shouldn't have? Everyone was, a bunch of them made videos about it, like jokes about it, like, oh my God, the basketball gods kept that hoop ball from going in. Do you remember uh, Do you remember when Kawhi Leonard's three-point ball bounced all over the rim, the same shot that Vince Carter couldn't make 20 years earlier against the 76ers and went down? No, 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 but, you, but, you're, but you're having a shotgun approach with me. Just one second. So, so hold on, no, 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 I'm going to tell you more, man. I got more information. Last year on Patreon, we were showing what games that the Raptors were going to win against the 76ers. We had the whole series mapped out perfectly because every game was synced with Kawhi Leonard's birthday that they won. Every single one. It, if it was like, um, if it was 337 days from Kawhi's birthday, I can't remember exactly what the distance was now, but that's like the 68th prime on that day. They picked up their 68th win of the season. Every game was like that in that series, including the one where it bounced around the rim. I keep saying technology. Have you ever heard of this word, technology? Okay, what evidence? Wait a minute, just wait. Now what evidence? Here, here, here's what evidence. Go back. Hold on. You ask what evidence. I'm answering your question. You're going to sit down and listen. No. You're going to listen. Okay, I'm going to listen. All right, tell me. What? Tell me. Give me the evidence. I'm trying to tell you the evidence right now. I'm telling you. Okay, burden of proof's on me. Easy. Easy, easy. Go back to the NBA's advertising campaign from a little more than ten years ago. How come? Do you listen to this guy? I'm trying to answer questions. You just start screaming some more. Go back to the NBA's advertising campaign from more than ten years ago. Their their advertising campaign from more than ten years ago is David Blaine the magician, showing how it's all magnets. He throws the ball over his shoulder from the length of the court and it goes in. It's all magnets. They did an advertising campaign for every team in the NBA that year with David Blaine and magnets. And I'm not saying that it is exactly magnets. There might be some sort of, there's all sorts of different type of magnetic technology. It's very clear that they're using some sort of technology to make sure balls stay in and go out. Case in point, last year, best call for the entire playoffs, and we had a lot of good ones, was that the Blazers would knock out the Thunder in the game they did. And I said the Blazers will win by one point because they were one and a half point favorites. I said they're not going to cover because all the money was on Portland. I said, watch, the Blazers will win by one. And the game was perfectly synced with Damian Lillard's birthday. From his last birthday into his upcoming birthday. You can only have one day like that in a year as a player where it's perfectly synced from your last birthday to your upcoming birthday. It was with you know the gematria of Portland Trailblazers. I said, watch, Lillard hits the game winner tonight, and they win by one. That, that was my prediction for that game. That's exactly what happened. And that same shot is part of the NBA's advertising campaign this year. But if you go watch the video I put up on that where it shows the, the total shot, the NBA advertising campaign this year is only showing when he releases the shot. His 37-foot shot. Portland equals 37. I want to say they got like their 37th win against the Thunder in the playoffs all time in that game. They used to be the Sonics, so they played each other a lot. There were some other 37 in that game, but that's a big number with Portland. Portland 37. Anyway, by the way, Lillard's birthday is 15 slash 7, like 157, the 37th prime. Bryant's 37. Los Angeles is 37. Damian Lillard lit up, lit up the Kobe Bryant remembrance game and then went on to emulate what Kobe Bryant did in scoring after Kobe Bryant's death who died on his 157th day of his age, Kobe Bryant 157. Anyway, Lillard, his shot. Go back and find the highlight of that shot. You can see how his shot is left. His shot is going left, but then it curves back to the right and goes in. Now, I imagine you play basketball. I grew up playing basketball, and if for anyone out there who's a hater who always says, like, oh, you must have never played sports, you're dead wrong. I was a good athlete growing up. They used to call me Reggie Miller of the double rims. Everybody wanted me to shoot. You ever play on a basketball court outdoors with double rims that has no give? I could drain all day on that from distance. So anyway, haters, I got a good mind and grew up a good athlete. But anyway, Damian Lillard's shot curves through the air like it had English on it, like a pool ball hit with spin, or like a soccer ball kick with spin. How do you shoot a basketball and curve it through the air? You know, as a good shooter, I never learned how to do the trick shot. And, and think about the Harlem Globetrotters. How do you think the Globetrotters are draining all day from all over the court? Who's that good at basketball? Have you ever been to a Harlem Globetrotters performance? They, they put out movies in the 80s from the Disney company 
about using technology and magnetics to ensure outcomes with basketball shots. You're talking through a cell phone right now. You're watching me on a computer. Way more advanced technology than to figure out to make sure how a ball goes in or stays out of a hole. You know? Look at these field goals in recent years, also in the NFL. A lot of them are slicing away from the upright, and then they just bend back the other way and go through the post. It's happening a lot if you're paying attention. I think they think most fans are drunk, so they're not paying attention. And then for the person who wants to say, oh, it's wind, uh, some of these kicks are in stadiums. It's definitely not wind that's making a football slice outwards of the upright and then curve back into the post, you know? Okay, one more time here, caller. Yeah, could I be heard? Yeah, so what's your answer? Yeah, you said, so, uh, yeah, you, you, you explain those things by saying technology, right? And you also said that the players are on to this. In, in other words, the game is rigged. So of course it my is. my other contention is, if, if that's the case, then has there ever been any players who've came out and admitted and said, hey, they told me to do such and such, so the game is rigged? Larry Johnson, I just had uh, Larry Johnson did. Larry Johnson, I just had him on my radio show. Larry Johnson of the Chiefs. Okay. And that's just Larry Johnson says this. So this, what I'm saying is, think about this. This has been going on for years. How much are these guys paid? Again, why are they paid as much as they are? This is what I would say. A lot of these guys are fought are fathers and sons, so they're born into the network. They're born and bred to be. They're paid millions. They're made to sign all sorts of agreements. You know, there, there's all sorts of reasons to explain why more players probably aren't coming out and speaking on it. They, they could end up as the next Sean Taylor. I mean, why was Sean Taylor and so many of these other athletes, why did they end up dead? Maybe they're the ones who threatened to say something. Yeah, because that's, that's, that's one thing I'm skeptical about. And I think it's a re- I have reasonable ground to be skeptical about it because you have all these players throughout the years and you rarely have anyone coming out saying anything. And it, it's like they're, they're doing a good job keeping this a secret. And well, I like I just said, secret societies are a real thing. All the American sports are credited to Freemasonry. That's a secret society that has over 10 million but members. I'm saying, but I'm talking about the players, the players themselves. It, what, you don't we, think that they're indoctrinated into this? Indoctrinated to keep it a secret. Yeah. Perfectly keeping it a secret and it's not being leaked. Well, I wouldn't say that's not being that's leaked. That's I wouldn't say that's not being leaked. You know, you had um, what what the uh, Philadelphia Phillies player write the book on sports and numerology titled "If They Only Knew." He died just right before uh, the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Philadelphia sports star. So again, what you're saying is you're not aware of this because you haven't done the research, and it just makes you wonder how many other people are out there that that didn't give clues and put out information. And. And then, like you said, so when they're being scarred, another question, when they're being stripped, are both teams aware of what the script is? So both teams would have to be aware of what's going on, right? Yeah, look at it. I mean, did you watch Did you watch the Titans-Chiefs football game this year? Did you see Mahomes' touchdown run before halftime? Yes, I've seen it. Did, did that look like uh, the Titans were trying to tackle him? How many guys let him run right past him on the sideline that could have easily bumped him out of bounds? How about the last guy who could have tried to wrap him up but just stuck out his shoulder pad as he ran by? Go watch the replay. You're saying based on that. I'm saying based on that and about a million other plays I've seen in my lifetime. Yeah. And what, okay, and, if, and, and you said with, with basketball, you mentioned the magnetic. You said you believe there's a magnet. It's it's some sort of technology. It could be magnets. It could be something else. They they got something going on. So, and that, and that's the issue I have. So when we're looking at players like the Kobe Bryant and the Michael Jordans and LeBron James, these players are not making the shot off of pure talent. It's they're being assisted by a magnet. Well, I'm not saying that they're not they're not talented. And they can't shoot the ball. Obviously, if you train in basketball, you should be able to drain shots. What I am saying, though, is the games are scripted. The the outcomes are ensured. The rituals are done. I mean, go read my book. Read my book about Kobe. I identify the numbers of his career. 26, 41, 113, 157. The exact numbers he ends up dying by. It was the same numbers his career was scripted around. Yeah, I mean, because, like I said, if I'm, if I'm going to go with the scripted narrative, then I have to believe 
that they'll come up to LeBron James and says, look, I need you to precisely score 33 points. And that's exactly what they will do. That's exactly what they will do. I bet you weren't here when I predicted that LeBron would score 41 points in a certain game the year that he came back from down 3-1. to one. And not only did he score 41 in that game, but so did his teammate Kyrie Irving in the same game. And I was showing why that was going to be a 41-point game. Both of them scored 41. Kings 41. I believe that game was on a 41-date numerology. There was some other stuff, too. This is back in 2016. Le- LeBron scores 27 points in Game 7 on the real King James's birthday, and then 27 days later, Nate Thurman drops dead, the player who wore 42 for the Warriors and Cavs. And in the prior years to that, I'd been saying that the Warriors and Cavs were going to meet in the finals before they ever did because of Nate Thurman. So after they both win a championship, Nate Thurman dies. So in other words, when these are when players appear to be mad or get emotional off of a loss or emotional off of, of a win, so in other words, they're acting. Then, if this is scripted, why would they? I would say they're acting. Other? I would okay. absolutely say they're acting. Look at these fights. So Did you say why are they fighting each other? Look at these fights, man. Do the WWE? It does look like the WWE. Most of these fights don't even look sincere. You see that Kansas Kansas State brawl? How fake did that look? Their star player gets a 12-game suspension in the Big 12, 12 days before the Super Bowl. And then what's Donald Trump do after the Super Bowl? He congratulates Kansas. <laughs> it's a joke, man. I, I, guess my, I guess my last question would be, um, did Cook, are you able to predict who's going to win the MLB championship or the NFL? How many more times do I have to do it? How many more times do I have to do it? Are these serious questions? How many more times do I have to do it? Seriously. How many times have I done it? Do it. I'm asking me how many times more you have to do it. I never heard you do it. Oh, I, I, well, I've done it almost every season since I've been here, man. I've done it almost every season since I've been here. So, I mean, to me, it's just like a ridiculous question. If you have a video, then I'll go to your video if you already did the prediction. That's the problem when your channel's been deleted 19 times, bro. My channel's been deleted 19 times by Google for doing videos like this. They do not want this information out there. I guarantee you I'd have over a million subs if I hadn't been deleted 19 times. I should be able to say, go back and watch every video from every year from the start of the season and see how we showed this championship was going to be this. This, this. This is what we've been doing nonstop. You know? Everyone laughed at me. The first sports pick I ever put out was spring training of the 111th World Series, and I said why the Mets would be in that World Series. And everyone laughed because the Mets were like forever to one long shots. But I said, it's not going to be the Yankees this year. It's going to be the New York Mets. And here's why. One of the big reasons is New York's 111. It was the 111th World Series. Next year was even easier. Next year was a lock. I don't use the word guarantee very often, but I guaranteed that year in spring training the Cubs would win the World Series, breaking the 108-year drought. Major League equals 108. There's 108 double stitches on a baseball. The only thing I was wrong about in spring training about that was I said that they would defeat the Houston Astros. But once the Astros were eliminated, I said, okay, it'll be the Cleveland Indians, which is who they defeated. And I said why they would win the 112th win, 112th World Series on November 2nd, 11-2. Just like how the year before the 111th World Series, I said it would end on November 1st, which it did, 1-1-1. Look at what they do this year in the offseason. The Astros, who won the 113th World Series, what day do they get in trouble? January 13th, 1-1-3. Then the next day, Alex Cora gets in trouble, who won the 114th World Series, in trouble on 1-1-4. They treat sports fans like they're fucking retarded, and they get away with it. So, anyway, man, appreciate the call. But um, the reason you're a skeptic uh, I, is I because... I got a last question. I'm going to move on, no, though. I already answered no, enough I, questions. What's up, caller? Hi, how are you? I'm doing all right. Good. I actually wanted to um, commend you for the work that you do and let you know that um, just stop wasting your time on, on people who want to stay asleep, basically, because there's callers like us that do care. And we know that uh, you work really hard to expose the truth to the masses. To be honest with you, I've stopped watching anything sports related or anything politically related for that matter um, due to the fact that if people don't know by now... You still there? Uh Uh-oh, something happened. Hold on, what happened here? All right, you're back on, caller. Sorry, there was some interruption there. Yeah, I was was just saying when it comes down to political facts and, and sports... That it's a situation where, you know, most of this stuff is rigged. Um, We don't have a choice. Like, people want us to believe that we have a choice. 
And it's important for people to understand that as much as we like to think that we are in a free state, we are not. It is very controlled. Um, and I just want to commend you for the work that you're doing and, and just, you know, take, you know, just even taking a look at this whole pop smoke situation. Um, I just kind of feel like he was created as a prototype on some level in order to be somewhat of a sacrificial lamb for a spinoff show. Well, that's kind of how it works. That would make sense to me. Absolutely. So I commend you for what you're doing. Um, I am Queen Prodigy, by the way, but thank you so much for your time. And um, I hope that you stay blessed and we're going to keep pushing for you. All right. Thank you so much. You have a good no day. No problem. All right. Take, take care. Take care. Yeah. And I mean, what really is annoying is that Google has sabotaged my channel by deleting it 19 times. Because again... I should be able to point to the thousands of videos I have with the thousands of correct predictions from sports to news stories to the death of Prince, all these things before it happened. And for anyone out there who wants to go back and listen to when I called Prince's death, it is still does still exist in the world. Search Jeff Young Music Without Boundaries. It's not on YouTube. Jeff Young Music Without Boundaries. Go to February 18th, 2016. There we call Prince's death before it happens. And um, yeah, you, here's a real stat. 50 people in America have as much wealth as the, the next 90%. That's 270 million people. 50 people have as much wealth in this country as 270 million. A real stat. How is that possible? Well, it's because of things like sports. It's because of what a small group of people own these sports teams, own these television networks, own these record studios that everyone is essentially giving their money to. They are collecting the wealth of the nation at once with their rigged bullshit that the sheep who get herded can't see through. So, something's very wrong in this world we're living in. How few people can see the obvious lies that are given to us every single day. The fact that almost nobody questions anything and, and accepts the term coincidence it's just a mockery. We are mocked every day by the people who control media and entertainment. It's just sick. I mean, everyone should have said, like, okay, what are the odds that LeBron passes Kobe in his hometown of Philly? That's a 1 in 82 chance because the Lakers only play 1 out of 82 games in Philly each year. Already astronomical. Just like just weeks before in the NFL, Drew Brees passes Peyton Manning on Monday Night Football against the Colts. Uh, the Saints play 1 out of 64 games against the Colts. So there's a 1 in 64 chance. Plus it's scheduled on primetime. And, and, I mean, also the fact that Archie Manning, you know, he, he has his son go to the league. Archie played for the Saints. His team was called the Aints. They never won nothing. Then who do the Saints get their first championship against? His son uh, uh, playing for the Colts. And, and I still remember Peyton Manning lofts a lob way back into the secondary, clear as day trying to throw the interception to put the game away. And, and people are believing this is real. I mean, this is a joke. And, and and right now it's this whole coronavirus thing. I mean, come on, people! Coronavirus. It's stupid. It's stupid. It's shit. All right, I'm gonna go back to the phone here in just a second. I just want to explain something about this coronavirus thing. Again, mockery, coincidence. On October 18th, look this up. This is all factual. On October 18th, 2019, the military world games were in Wuhan, China. On the same day, October 18th, 2019, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Johns Hopkins University simulated something that they called Event 201. And what it was about was simulating a coronavirus outbreak that would kill over 60 million people, right? Event 201, the same day as the Wuhan military games. Now, patient zero for coronavirus was said to be December 12th. From October 18th to December 12th is 56 days. Coronavirus equals 56, right? Now, they said the first patient found in the U.S. was on January 21st, just north of Seattle. That's where the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's headquartered. Believe me, I used to live across the street in an apartment. I was there before it even existed. It used to be a park with basketball courts where I played like Reggie Miller of the Double Rims. Now it's the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. January 21st was the outbreak headlines. Patient one or patient zero in the U.S. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation equals 121. 
Coronavirus outbreak equals 121, like January 21st, 121. Okay? Now they bring out that the fact that this Dean Koontz novel was written in 1981. Dean Koontz novel, right? And Dean Koontz predicted a Wuhan coronavirus outbreak that would be a military conspiracy. And he called it Wuhan 400. And if you write out Wuhan 400 as words, it equals 201, like event 201. And the media said that this pandemic really took off on the Chinese New Year, which was January 25th. From Dean Koontz's birthday to the Chinese New Year, year of the rat, like rat split, spread virus and plagues, from his birthday to the Chinese New Year is 201 days. It is all planned. It's all coordinated. Look up all the headlines with Dean Koontz. All of them call it a coincidence instead of what it is, a conspiracy. Because everyone's been programmed from the television where they always say, back to your regularly scheduled programming, and they tell you everything's a coincidence. I still remember after September 11th and the Patriot Act and the Patriots, you couldn't even watch the Sunday football commentary without Terry Bradshaw's bald ass having some commentary about the conspiracy theorists questioning 9-11, as if you were some asshole to question an event that absolutely needed to be questioned. You know, they wrote off everything about that day as coincidence. So let me take another call here. It's no caller ID, so it could be a troll. What's up? Hey, Zach. I don't know if you've already covered it, but um, Teddy Mellencamp, yeah. um, her house, and the 38, her age being 38, right. her baby, she's pregnant. If my calculations are right, she's due on 3-8, March 8th. Uh, yeah, March 8th. Hold on. Pause. I have to answer the door real quick. Sit tight, everybody. I'll be right back. 30 seconds. Okay. 